Right, short video, question five. Um, really, really important question. Um, it, this is to go alongside the booklet that we looked at on Friday. Please, if you've not already, watch the section A booklet for the question. Friday, I apologize. I just wanted to get so much. I was so pleased and so happy you were all there. And I just wanted to get to almost too much in. So there's loads of things I didn't say about question five. So please pay attention. Do what I've asked you to do. And maybe have a go at the free questions I've put at the end, even if it's just a plan. Um, right. So remember, the exam is now in 45 minutes. You want to spend... 45 minutes on question five. If you want to do it first, do it first. If you're worried about time, do it first. But if you do answer section A and there's 45 minutes left, go on to um, question five. Don't be afraid to plan. Well, actually, you must plan. If you don't plan, I will kill you. Um, plan, even if it's a 15-minute plan. If you were there, keep your head while everyone else is losing theirs and sit there and almost maybe put your pen down and think. Be brave enough to think what you're going to write about. And then you can spend 15 minutes for your plan, gather your ideas, work out how you're going to end it before you start. Quality, not quantity. I want, I'd want. i rather have two pages of carefully controlled, making every word, every sentence, every paragraph counts, than four pages of waffle where you're making it up as you go along. Um, so paper two, section B. It is explain, argue, persuade. I argue a lot of these things cross over. Arguing is the same as persuade. Explain slightly different, you're just being clear, um, but instruct and advise is also in a way persuade. But they're different formats that could come up. If a letter comes up, you can pause it, they're the kind of things they are looking for. Remember the way, and I'm not going to do it, I've taught you to remember the difference between sincerely and faithfully. Who the F am I writing to? You don't know the name, yours faithfully. If you know the name, you're writing the letter to Steve sincerely. Um, so make it look like a letter with the address, dear, sir or madam. And at the end, remember, you have yours sincerely almost floating in the middle below your last paragraph. Article. I've shown you some examples of an article, but headline. And then underneath headline, and then you can pretend you're a journalist by your name. And then underneath you can have something explaining your view in terms of the strap line. Like that example there. See, headline, your name. And then maybe this bit, you're explaining your view. Leaflet, it's never come up before. Um, but in terms of a leaflet, don't draw pictures, but yes, you can put bullet points in. Lots of big titles. Can you see this is a leaflet on grief? And they've just put coping. And then they're giving advice for coping with grief. Other ones there. Speech. When I went through, pretty much everything was either article or letter. Speech has not come up. If I was a better man, I'd say it's going to be a speech. So with speech, make sure you are clearly addressing an audience throughout. The idea of you, we, us, direct address is really important in terms of a speech. You can maybe have skillful re reminders to, like, in terms of where they, the speech is being. It will give you a venue for the speech kind of thing. So references to the weather, maybe references to the journeys people have made kind of thing. Thank you for listening. As you can see, we're all gathered here today kind of thing. Essay. Same, well, simple introduction and conclusion, it says. But that is to apply simple introduction and conclusion and apply to everything else, all the other formats. The most important thing, it doesn't really matter because they're all your paragraphs, your signal and develop, signal and develop. That's an idea of an example question. That is from a past paper. Now, as you can see, because there's no foundation paper, they give you hints about what your paragraphs could be about. So... Read that, those kind of things. So you may find, especially if you're struggling, break down the statements and plan around the statements. So maybe you could have this one. You could have a paragraph on sport and whether it's not fun and fair and open to everyone. Or one on money and corruption. One on winning at every, any cost. Right, this is what I screenshotted from my examiner training. 
So write less, craft more, as I said before. Make a plan, make a plan, make a, make a, make a plan. Link your paragraphs using discourse markers. So maybe if you plan properly, you can reference what's coming later kind of things. You can make a reference to say, as I earlier said, or if you're talking about, um, if you know in advance you're going to talk about a topic in paragraph four, you can, paragraph two, you can say, as I will expand upon this later. But also linking paragraphs using discourse markers are those connectives. Firstly, secondly, furthermore, as a result, on the other hand, this is different too. Those things. Avoid overusing linguistic devices. Don't cram all your De Forester techniques into your last paragraph. Just make everyone count. It's about the click and communication and convincing communication. Yes, use them, but don't use them for the sake of using them. Use them because you're using them correctly. And I'll give you some examples at the end of this video. Vary your sentence openings to create effects. Try and make every sentence begin with a different word, a different phrase. Apart from your anaphora, your artful repetition, and your pattern of free anaphoras as well. Okay, so free in a row work well. Um, use a wide range of punctuation. Question marks, speech marks, apostrophes for possession or omission, colon, semicolon, okay? Uh, be ambitious in using your posh words. Use those posh words like sagacious, gratification, futility, sacrifice, visceral, transient, onerous, liberate, dichotomy, dichotomy, dichotomous, impregnable, uh, elemental, milieu. You can get a milieu for the state of the environment. You can see I'm reading off the board with the words I've done this year. Repulsive, abyss, pernicious, disdain, unbridled, meagre, quarantined, subservience, narcissistic, narcissism, altruistic, if you try and get narcissistic into it and learn how to spell it, learn how to spell a really posh word that you can get in like pernicious or callous or avarice or philanthropic or misanthropic or philanthropy. Get your posh words in. Proofread what you've written. At the end of every paragraph, before you start in the next one, go back to the paragraph, check it for everything. Check it for everything and tick off your techniques that you're doing the plan, which I'll show you later. Right, possible ways to plan show on the sheet. Now, on show my homework, actually, at the back of your booklet, you've got that plan. So let me just minimize this so you can see it. I know it's back to front, but you've all got it. Now, you would not write down direct address, but you may just... Practice of the weekend, de fore, and I've got rid of the S, remember, for the um, de foristics. I don't really want made up statistics. Uh, direct address, you, we, us, our. Alliteration, you know that. Facts, you can make up, don't make up facts, but you know facts. It is a fact that 16 year olds are not allowed to vote. Is it a, fa is a fact that the world is getting hotter each year? Opinions, rhetorical questions, emotive vocab. Are positives, getting a positive in. Colon sentence, imperatives, anaphora times three. Wow, sexy sentences, posh words, connectives, and then you've got the poo, the punctuation. And that kind of thing is a part of your plan that you tick off as you're going through after you've proofread every single paragraph. Now, you've got three examples in those booklets, along with the plan, about different ways of different ones. You've got the one about 16-year-olds should be allowed to vote. You've got one about it's tougher for teenagers today than it's been for any other generation in society. And you've got all the techniques. I've highlighted this booklet. If you're not, I've scanned it in and it's on your homework too. And then you've got something from year seven, but I still think it's really good and it applies. Poor old Elsie, the village, who is a um, letter about why the village should not be stopped going through St. Agnes. Now, possible ways of planning. Yes, you show on the sheet with the techniques in the middle. And remember the example we did where you come up, don't go paintballing. Remember, do not go paintballing like a little year seven. So spend a minute to get down all your ideas in relation to the statement. And then once you've done that, think about your four big ones. Save your strongest one 
till the end. So make your most convincing argument, the most compelling one, at the end, number four. And then that way, the last thing the examiner is thinking about before they start keep thinking about what market's going to be, you're leaving them with the most convincing arguments. Um, so, but the head and the tail, grab the attention straight away. So grab the attention straight away and please look at the examples. Now, often it could just be an anecdote, personal story. Um, in the examples I've given you, the anecdote for the um, should 16-year-olds be allowed to vote is just strong emotive language. You can read it. And in terms of the idea that we see them on TV, we see children fighting, that they should be seen and should be not heard. Read the example. The other example one, similar one, personal anecdote. You can make it up. You doesn't have. You can pretend to be someone else. You can pretend to be a twenty-five-year-old single mother if you wish. The, you can pretend to be anything. Don't think that the examiner is going to come around and check that you are that person. So you're making it convincing. So with this one, uh, tougher for today's teenage generation. Um, I pretended I was a student when I found out that they were changing the grey boundaries. And it's talking about how I felt at that point. So the anecdote grabbed the attention. And then with the one at the end, it's talking about poor Elsie who is struggling along Pig Lane because the bus has been cancelled and she can't meet her best friend. And she ended up in a hedge because she's getting run over almost by a speeding car that she never saw. And then the end goes back to Elsie saying, make this change and Elsie can actually go to Tuesday Club again with her friends. Um, now, I was going to show you a waterway aid advert and any kind of charity advert, which is on the day, Time TV, it's full of them. And notice the structure, what they do at the start is another way of thinking about your head and your tail. It's like a negative story to show emotion and grab attention. They will often start with like, um, let's say a donkey sanctuary advert with a poor donkey which is struggling, which has been beaten. And it's poor Johnny the donkey and he's, it's the idea and it's, it's got your attention. And then they go for the main body of the advert and the problems and how to help. And at the end of the advert, we have Johnny running for a field looking happy again. Now, that kind of technique is used in so many persuasive adverts for charities. That's the kind of thing you could use in yours. Your beginning grabs the attention, shows the um, emotion. If it's on global warming, it could be on the idea of um, people struggling in fires in Australia or in New York at the moment in terms of the effects of that or the flooding you see on TV. And in the end, it could be a positive scenario if people take your advice. So you can start off with a negative story. Explain your view, go through maybe the existing problems, possible solutions to these problems, what we need to make these solutions happen, and then return to the opening and make it positive. Or you can go through the examples that have got the traditional Sean the Sheep. Engage and open him, the end links back, and then your four signals and develops. Four signal your topics, that one important issues, and then you develop upon it. This one suffragettes, and then we develop upon it. This one, Brexit, and then uh, 16 year olds are more of a future than a pensioner, and then we develop upon it. You don't have to use a counter argument, but you please do if you can. With the counter argument, remember you state what your opponents think, and then you must, must say why they are wrong. So make sure you look at the examples of the counter argument in, um, that we went through in class, but especially that one. Right. Things to go in your plan as you tick off. I've already talked about that. On show my homework, I have put a link to the wow sexy sentences again. But remember, I've done this with you for ages and ages and ages. So maybe your main body paragraphs, so maybe not your engaging opening or the tail, you're talking about your one, two, three, and four, and you're showing the sheep. Start with a wow sentence. Make one of them a more, 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 or a less, 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 further, further, further. Make one of them having a positive. Make one of them, the world is facing a terrible pro problem, colon, state what the problem is. Make one of them a rhetorical question. Okay? So to make sure you, you are getting a range of sentences in each one. Just filming a video, sir. I'll be, Mr. Warren, we done it in one minute. Um, right. The other thing is anaphora, triplet. So I'm saying try range of sentences. Don't write words, write music. Range of 
long, short sentences, medium length sentences, long sentences, imperative sentences, commands. Simon says commands. They are there. Simon says commands. Get them in, especially towards the end. Anaphora and the pattern of free. So just two examples, which I think work. So here you've got, yes, our older teenagers are definitely seen. And then you've got your pattern of free. You see them raging at the older generations who are taking away their European freedom of movement. You see them raising millions of pounds for charity to help others who are also not treated equally in our world. You see them striking from schools and colleges up and down the country. Okay. Then here again, you've got uh, enough, well, a triplet um, of rhetorical questions. Surely for such a crucial issue as Brexit, the vote should have been given to more citizens. Could their Remain votes have tipped the balance in favour of Remain? Could they have saved the country from the cataclysmic catastrophe that has paralysed Parliament for the past three years? The beauty of using the head and engaging opening and a personal anecdote and make up a story that's happened to you or someone else or how you felt when you heard about this is you can use your metaphors, alliteration, personification, all those descriptive techniques because you're describing the emotion that you feel. Make it emotion and all. Make it convincing. Right. Direct address and imperatives you're going through. Our, we, our young adults are seen and now their voices must be heard. You've got an imperative in there. Simon says our young adults are seen and now their voices must be heard. It is time that we trusted the next generation, blah, 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 blah. So get imperatives in too. Be careful with your counter-arguments. So this is the example I've talked about before. So I want you to pause it and read it and notice how it shifts. So I say what my opponents might be thinking. And then when my mouse is there, however, if this is your mind, then your mind is mistaken. And then I say why they are mistaken. So pause it and read it. You must. Okay, now you've paused and read it. Notice how when I planned for it, you can see 16-year-old has more of a future than a pensioner. Sorry, it was this one. Counter-argument, 16-year-olds are not mature enough. Yes, they are. Army, marriage, sex, can't drink, alcohol, etc. I cannot reiterate how important a plan is. Use your positives. If you forget with your positive, maybe practice turning these two into an appositive. But here you've got an appositive, could be before or could be after. A constant threat to the environment renames the poisonous emissions from car exhausts. Uh, remember the test for the appositive. If you remove the thing it renames and it still makes sense, you've done it correctly. But using a positive after the noun also shows off you can use your commas correctly, your two bracketing commas. Right. I went through all of the past paper question fives, and I could not believe it that these three topics have never come up. Environments. So I've made up three questions. Everyone knows that the environment is under threat, but there are other issues that are just as important. Inequality and war, for example. Technology is ruining our lives. We are chained to smartphones, digital friends, an and algorithms. Anyone taking part in the staff round? Just please meet to the PE corridor now. Thank you. See, I can't take part in the staff rounders because I'm just I'm doing this for you lot. Um, sacrifices. It is turning us against each other and making us scared to talk to each other. And you got a letter, and then at the bottom you got an article: diets, calorie trackers. Daily workouts, body mass index. We have lost the ability to just enjoy food and exercise as human pleasure. There is too much pressure in society to force people on what to eat and how much to exercise. People just need to use common sense and enjoy life. What well, honestly, please do this. Read through the examples in the booklets. Look at the plans. Make a plan using that. Make a plan using that. For those three answers. Maybe not write all three. Definitely you can write one of them. It won't do any harm. But write them and think about what you would say. And I would encourage you to do as I did with most of you last week. Just do the plan. But write the opening sentence. Write the topic sentence for each of your main four legs. 
and make one a positive, one a more, 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 less, 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 further, further, further. Make one of them a rhetorical question, maybe. Make one of them a colon sentence. And then think about what it's going to be. How amazing would you feel when you're walking along this corridor on Monday afternoon and you know that a similar question has come up and you knew exactly what to write in the actual piece? Or at the same time, just by doing this, it's going to help you. And how amazing would you feel if you have a go at Section 8 past paper? Okay? Paragraph or I will kill you. Plan or I will kill you. Signal your uh, paragraphs, topic sentence, and develop upon them. Okay? They are the most important things. Good luck, everyone. Best summer of your life is coming up soon. Thank you.